Most of you watching this video remember the year 2008. Starting with the US housing market, the entire worldwide economy collapsed, causing a wave of bankruptcies, layoffs, and bleak economic conditions. The bursting of the bubble would later become known as the Great Financial Crisis, or GFC for short. At the root of this massive meltdown was real estate, falling 28% in the years following the crises, and in some markets like Vegas, falling over 50%. This massacre in values led the way in causing a worldwide recession Session that decimated the economy for practically an entire decade. Today, many are predicting a similar outcome in this sector following years of insane price growth, speculation, and greed. The evidence for a bubble is growing, but for many, the doubt is still there. On this channel, we've gone over the leading indicators that suggest a crash in the near future. Indicators like building permits, mortgage applications, and starts. We've read the earnings reports from major builders, examined particular markets, and investigated greed among mom-and-pop investors. But for some, that still isn't enough, and I can't really blame anyone who believes the no crash scenario. After all, we know that for about three years now, we've seen values do the unthinkable. At every point where it was believed that prices have gone too far, they just kept going up. And this relentless growth has changed the psychology of the buyer. They've watched friends and family get rich as homes went parabolic, while they themselves stayed on the sidelines waiting for a cooling period that never came. The crash skeptics have every right to question the supposed coming decline. If it hasn't happened yet over the past three years, why would it happen now? Their argument is simple. Inventory is too low, the demographics are too loaded, and a new era is among us in the United States. Bill McBride, who's one of the most grounded and knowledgeable figures in real estate analysis, has done a ton of research regarding this commonly referenced inventory thesis. The straightforward summary is that right now there simply aren't enough houses for sale to create conditions for a crash. It was his research and a piece called Inventory Tells the Tale that showed us direct evidence that historically for housing values to decline, you generally need a supply glut or too many houses on the market. And we've seen from Realtor.com data that currently the situation is far from meeting this condition. What we have today is a market that has yet to recover from the super growth era following March of 2020. You see up here, these lines, they represent the inventory situation from 2017, 2018, and 2019. These are what many are calling the last of the quote-unquote normal years in real estate. Active listing counts range from 1 to 1.3 million. Now as you move down in the graph, you see this. This is 2020 when everything began changing. The inventory situation adjusted, falling from about 1 million that January to about 600K. In line with Bill McBride's research, we saw values explode as inventory tightened. Supply got even tighter the following year in 2021, falling to nearly 400K by December. And right when you thought it couldn't get any grimmer, it fell again in 2022 to a record low of around 350,000. Prices at this point were simply unbelievable. So where is the good news? After all, it was in the last video that I pointed out that prices were falling. In fact, the steepest housing declines last quarter were in previously high-flying markets, especially in affluent states like California. Now, even the most well-off Americans are hurting. Take this stunning survey for an example. It revealed that more than half of Americans who make six figures are now living paycheck to paycheck. This video is on housing affordability. What do you think that looks like if even college-educated young people with high-paying jobs are struggling to make basic car and rent payments? Combine that with the tens of thousands of people laid off in just the last few weeks and Jerome Powell now actively trying to bring the labor market to a screeching halt. It's clear that a financial storm is brewing and nobody is safe. At least Goldman Sachs is being honest with clients about where the market is headed. Nowhere. But if you think hedge fund CEOs and financial titans are letting their money waste away in savings accounts or a 60-40 portfolio, think again. They're pouring hundreds of millions into assets that aren't correlated to the stock market, because even if the stock market flatlines this year as they expect, these low correlation assets can continue to climb higher and higher. But how can we easily invest in low correlation assets? Well, thousands of you MHFIN viewers are already using a platform dealing in these same kinds of assets, one that paid out over $25.8 million last year. I'm talking about Masterworks, the art investing platform. I've talked about Masterworks for over a year now and their results have only gotten better with time. 11 exits now with each returning a profit to investors like you. Masterworks has done so well, they've had to keep using their waitlist as paintings can sell out in minutes. But I've been a partner for so long, they're giving you guys priority access right now. Just click the link below. 
Now, going back to that inventory situation, if it's so bad, where is the good news? Well, if you go back to that 2022 line, you can see that despite some of the lowest numbers in history, the situation began to change later that summer as we did see the inventory situation begin to rapidly rise. And this is where I begin to disagree with the crash deniers. In fact, to start the year, we are nearly 63% higher than where we were in January of 2022. But to be fair, following history, we still have a long way to go before we enter normal territory again, which is way up here around that 1 million mark. Now, following the 2022 line, we can see that from the start to the peak, we witnessed an increase of around 89%. So if this year we follow the same type of trajectory as last year, we should end up in normal territory once again. Essentially, that was a very long way of saying that, yes, it's true that inventory is currently low, but it's beginning to rapidly change. And if we continue to see increases in supply following the pace of last year, we will end this year with a very different environment that makes the original argument completely invalid. The inventory holdup would no longer be true. On top of this, the strong correlation between price growth and inventory is already broken. Bill McBride admitted that despite low supply levels, we have seen prices fall. Something that has never been observed according to his data published on the Substack. You can see just how much of an outlier these past five months have been and you have to think, if prices are declining as inventory is supposedly low, can you imagine the carnage when it floats back up into normal territory? But even outside of inventory, we have a massive problem with accepting something else that I think of as the main piece of evidence in regards to a future value decline. And it comes down to a simple concept, affordability. At the end of the day, if Americans can't pay for houses, despite some of the lowest unemployment numbers in history, you have to wonder about the near future and the obvious mean reversion that is likely to happen. Now, affordability can be a hard thing to measure. In fact, I had a hard time finding a chart that truly displays this problem in an obvious form, so I decided to create my own using data going back to 1990. What I did was pretty simple on the surface. I took the median home price and the average interest rate for each quarter going back 33 years. I then calculated a monthly mortgage based on a 10% down payment, the average taxes, insurance, and PMI. This number is what a typical American would pay had he bought a home in that particular year during that particular quarter. I then took that payment and divided it by the median household income, which essentially gives you a number that shows what percentage of your gross pre-tax income a typical American household would need to cover the mortgage payment from that quarter. The results are absolutely shocking, and it goes to show you just how bad the situation is right now. You see, starting in the early 90s, we saw this ratio hover around 40%. This is despite the fact that the 30-year mortgage in that year carried an average interest rate of 10.3%. In this era, we saw a small recession occur, followed by a regional collapse that affected a few major metros like Boston, New York, LA, and San Francisco. Going forward, interest rates improved in the 90s as wages increased and the ratio fell to record lows at one point reaching 35%. Then, of course, we saw the development of a new bubble. Entering the 2000s, home values once again started exploding. The ratio reached 52% in 2007, far above the trend line, and as always, the market found a way to revert to the mean. What followed was the worst housing crash since the Great Depression, and once again, the ratio had become normalized, bottoming out near that 40% number. This continued for years until about 2019. At that point, we saw interest rates fall to record lows, increasing affordability and causing a massive buying frenzy in real estate. Turbocharged by the events of 2020, we saw affordability jump to record highs, reaching 64%. Now you have to ask yourself, how much higher can this chart go? In the past, whenever it has gone above this moving average, values have always found a way to restart back below. At current levels, we are way above the trend line, and to suggest that values will continue this trajectory is to suggest that the American dream is over. Sure, there are countries throughout the Western world that have affordability issues much worse than ours. For example, in New Zealand, the median income is around 95,000 New Zealand dollars, yet the median home is nearly 1 million, and the argument could be made that the US is headed in this direction. However, it still doesn't explain this most recent jump. When we look at the trend line, you can clearly see that yes, homes are getting less affordable and they have been for most of the last 30 years. But we've never seen a spike like this, and even if you adjust it for what is considered normal for the last 10 years, we are still far above the linear trend. Combining these two factors, affordability and inventory, you can see why so many are bearish regarding the future of real estate. You have inventory moving in the wrong direction rapidly, combined with the fact that affordability is rising way past historical averages. 
And this is something that previously almost always resulted in a crash. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the video.